Hello and welcome to this episode of Excel Bonanza, your Bonanza for Excel knowledge. This is Abdurrahman Abdu, and in this episode, we're gonna discuss how you can extract values from a table based on some criteria. So I got this question from one of my students on my Excel dashboard scores, how we could extract values from a table based on some criteria. And in this video, I'm going to be answering this question. I'm going to be providing two solutions for that question. The first solution is more difficult, which is using array formulas. And the second solution is more user friendly and is more business environment friendly, where you can share the solution with your colleagues and it's going to be using pivot tables. And I would like to thank Andrew Roberts from Excel Tactics for sharing the solution on his blog. I'll include the link for the article in the description below. And I would also like to thank a lot Mike Excelis von Gervin for actually his videos on array formulas that I had watched in the past that would help me a lot in understanding array formulas. So I'd really recommend that you would watch his videos for array formulas. They're actually great. I'll include the link for his playlist on array formulas in the description below as well. So with that being said, let's get started. So in this video, we're going to discuss a question that I've received from one of my students. His name is Benga, and he's asking about extracting values from a table based on some criteria. So actually, I've got two ways to solve that problem. So basically what he wants to do, for example, if we've got a table like that one, where it contains the employee name, department, the hiring date, and the age, he wants to extract the name of an employee based on, for example, his age. So based on his age being under 30 years old, for example. And also, let's say if we add another criterion, such as working in the HR department. So out of these employees under 30, how do we get the employees working in the HR department? So we're going to see two ways to solve that problem. We're going to see a way using array formulas, and we're going to see another way using pivot tables. So basically, I built this array formula that extracts the names based on criteria. And I've been able to extract the name of the employee based on the age being under 30 from that table. Now, this is a complex array formula, and I'm going to try to break it down for you as much as possible. So let's start building that array formula together. So basically, when you think about the problem, you're trying to extract values from a list, and you're trying to extract them based on certain criteria. And the function that can extract values if you give it a list is actually the index function. So probably we should start our formula with the index function like this should be our starting point so if we write equals index and then the first argument here or the first input for the index function is the array now the array is basically where you would like to extract your data from and actually i would like to extract my data from the employee name column right because i want to extract some names from the employee name column based on their age being less than 30 for example so i'm going to select that list and i'm going to absolute that by pressing f4 on my keyboard and now comes the second input for the index function the row number so actually i need to extract only certain rows from this list i don't want all the rows i just need the ones that have the age less than 30. So how do I approach that problem? Well, I believe I can use some sort of a logical formula that can check whether the age is less than 30 or not. So I could actually use an if function and I could do a logical test, which is if the age in this array, and this is why it's going to be an array formula, because we're going to do an array comparison here. We're going to compare this whole array for the age against the value being less than 30. So here I'm doing a comparative array operation. I'm comparing the values in an array to this number 30. So I'm comparing them to the number 30. I'm testing if the values are less than 30. And this will result in an array of true and false values. So what if the values are true? 
what would I like to do if the values are true? So if I find that the age is less than 30, what would I like to do? Well, I think I would like to get the row number for those rows that have the age less than 30. But I don't want the absolute number for the rows. So for example, for Rebecca Bennington, because her age is less than 30, I don't want to get her absolute row number in Excel, which is 15. I want to get her row number starting from row number 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So her row number should be 9. This is what I want to get. I want to get 9. So I can actually use the row function and I can put the row numbers for all the names inside the row function. I'm going to absolute that and I can actually subtract the row number of the first cell here in the list and I'm going to absolute that as well because if I'm dragging the formula down I need to make sure that this is absolute, that this is fixed. And if I add a plus one I'll be able to get an incrementation of the row number here with this formula. Row all the rows minus the row number of the first row plus one. So this way I'll be able to get an incrementation of the rows. And I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to show you two explanation columns. Okay, so I've unhidden these two explanation columns. There's one here for the if function and there's another one for the row function. These explanation columns that are in yellow, the yellow of a sticky note. And these are actually explanation columns. The formulas in here, they are not part of the solution. They are just for explanation. So the row function here basically, or the two row functions that I've written here are basically just to increment the numbers of the rows. So they would result in one, two, three, four, five, six. So as you can see here, just an incrementation for all the rows that are containing my solution. And then I'm going to filter those rows using the if function because the if function is going to yield trues and falses. So actually the trues are going to be only for the cells containing the age being less than 30. So as you can see here, we only get a true in these green cells. I'm using conditional formatting here for explanation. As you can see here, only the green cells have the age less than 30, as you can see here. So only these cells as well yield the true by the if function. And that means that only the rows corresponding to the trues are going to be taken from this row function okay so this these row functions get me all the rows this if function filters the rows for only the ones containing the true and actually for the if function as well i'm gonna leave the value if false argument to be blank because this will make excel give a false if i do not meet the test which is what i want i want any cell not to meet the test to give me a false okay so i'm going to leave the argument for value of false empty and it's actually an optional argument okay so if i close the brackets for the if i'm going to leave the argument blank okay so let's examine what the if function outputs so i'm going to highlight it and press f9 on my keyboard and as you can see here the if function what it outputs is basically an array of false values, but we've got some numbers here. So what are these numbers for? These numbers are actually corresponding to the row numbers that contain the age being less than 30. So as you can see here, Rebecca Bennington, her row number is 9 starting from the row containing the name of the first employee. And as you can see here, we get the number nine from there. And for example, Carmelia Izagir is number 19, and we get the number 19 in her position. So that means that we're actually getting somewhere. We're getting the row numbers for those employees that have the age less than 30. Hmm. So how do we extract these row numbers from this array? Well, we could use actually the small function to do that. And we can use it in combination with the rows function as well. So we're actually going to put this if inside a small function. 
And the small function, what it does is that it extracts the kth smallest item from an array or a list. So we're going to give it the array that is outputted by the if function that contains the falses and the numbers. And then for the k, we're actually going to use the rows function for that. And the rows function, we're going to use it as a number incrementer. Okay, so you could select, for example, row number seven here, any row, it doesn't matter, and make its start fixed and its end to be relative or not fixed, okay? Because this is actually going to increment numbers, like it's going to give us one, two, three, four. So that means we're going to get the first smallest number in the array that is outputted by the if function, which is going to be nine. And then when we drag the formula one step down, we're going to get the second smallest number, which is actually going to be 19, okay? And these numbers are going to be put in the row number argument for the index. So that means we're going to be able to extract the item in the ninth row in this list here. So the item is the ninth row is going to be Rebecca Bennington. And then when we drag the formula one step down, we're going to extract the item in the 19th row. And then the item in the 20th row. And so on and so forth. So the rows function is going to help us to increment numbers for the small function. So we're going to close the brackets for the small function here. And then the column number is going to be a 1 or we can omit it and Excel will just give it a default value of one, but I like to explicitly put that. So it's gonna be just a one for the index function. So here the index function has an array, the array, which is the list of values that we need to extract the data from are basically the list of names, the whole list. And then we're gonna get which row numbers exactly using this formula combination that is inside the small function. So we're gonna filter the values using the if and with the help of the row functions, we're gonna get only the rows that contain the age less than 30. And then using the small function, we're gonna extract the numbers from the array containing the numbers and the false values. And using the rows, we're gonna get the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest numbers from that list. Now, if you press control and shift and enter, we're actually going to get the first name that has its age less than 30. If we drag the formula down, we're going to get all the names. Okay. But now in some rows, we're going to get an error. So how do we get around that error? Well, we know actually that the if error function can do that for us, right? Because we can do if error and then a blank. If you get an error, control shift enter. And now if we drag the formula down, we don't get an error. We just get a blank value. So you can have this formula to be a flexible formula. You just need to make sure to drag the formula down more than the number of rows than you are expecting. So as to make sure that you accommodate any extra rows in case there are. So what about if we need to add another criterion like working in the HR department, for example. How do we do that? Well, if you try the AND function, for example, so I'm going to copy this formula here, put it here. If you try the AND function, so let's say somebody would think that you should try the AND function and do AND this is less than 30 and this list here for the departments is equal to HR. This is not going to work. Even if you press control shift and enter, it's not going to work properly. The reason for that is the and does not output an array of values. So this is why it's not going to work. So how do we make it work? Well, we're not going to use the and. We're actually going to nest another if inside that. So we're going to test first if the employee's age is less than 30. And then for the value of true, we're going to nest another if and we're going to do department is equal to HR. And then this is going to be the value of true, the row function. And we're going to close with another bracket here. Control shift enter. And if we drag the formula down, we're going to have less employees because not empl all the employees that are under 30 work in the HR department. 
So as you can see here, one of here, one of them, Rebecca, worked in production, and also another one here worked in marketing. We've got only three working in HR: Carmelia and Carly and Stanley. Only three working in HR. So this is how you can solve this problem using an array formula. I'm gonna also show you another solution using a pivot table and it's much easier. And I believe that this is the solution that you should try to opt for in a business environment where you're actually sharing workbooks with other people because the percentage of Excel users who understand array formulas is a low percentage and somebody can just try to edit the formula and press enter instead of control shift enter because you cannot do an array formula with just enter you need to do control shift enter after you write the formula press enter and so the formula is just screwed up okay so this is actually a more practical solution so let's see the pivot table solution so here i've converted this data set to a table and built a pivot table based on it and i actually created in that table a column that says age is less than 30 and it actually does just a test if the age the the column for the age is less than 13 give me a true else give me a false and then using the pivot table that i built on it i put the employee name here in the rows and in the filters I put the age less than 30 column and also the department and here if I filter for the age less than 30 being true and I filter for the department being HR I can actually get the three employees that are working in the HR and their age is less than 30 okay so that's a lot easier than doing an array formula but the drawback for for pivot tables is basically that they need to be refreshed so the results are not updated instantly whenever the table is changed whenever the data in the table is changed you need to make sure to refresh it i've got a shortcut here on my excel but you can do data and then you can click on refresh all here or refresh the pivot table it doesn't matter refresh all refresh all pivot tables so you click on refresh all and your pivot table is going to be refreshed basically. And you can actually remove this grand total row as well by highlighting the pivot table and then going to the design here, grand totals off for rows and columns and this grand total is going to be removed. And you can base a formula on it equals if this is equal to blank then give me a blank else give me this and you can base a formula on that and create a list that is not in a pivot table you know so there you go two solutions for that problem if you like the video press the like button and share it with your friends and please subscribe to my youtube channel you can also get my excel cheat sheets for free and get trial access to my courses as well using the links below in the description which will also subscribe you to my newsletter where you will get special discounts not only on my courses but also other instructors courses on udemy as well so thank you very much for watching this video and i'll see you on the next one